Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Detroit breaks ground on a project that could prevent flooding that ruins homes and basements. And we know that so many homeowners were impacted by the heavy rainfall that we saw last year. And the city really doesn't want that to happen again. Yeah, they are investing millions on the city's west side in neighborhoods near Rouge Park. Our Kim DeGiulio was there for today's big announcement and shows us what that money is going towards. $40 million is what the Detroit Water and Sewage Department is investing in this project here at Rouge Park. And this project is going to help avoid flooding like we saw last summer. And as you can see here, the project broke ground today. We are thankful that many organizations and businesses have joined DWSD in this effort to improve stormwater management. They lost valuable memorabilia. Uh, valuables they will never be able to get back. Last year's excessive rainfall was a wake up call for many. The flood we got last year was a one in 1000 year flood. And so the system is built for a 10 year flood, which is 1.7 inches in 24 hours. We got eight inches. Gary Brown of the Detroit Water and Sewage Department says rainfall like that is unfortunately going to happen again. So with climate change, uh, uh, it's real. It, you know, the water, the rains are more intense and more frequent. It is going to happen again, and we've got to find ways to make our city more resilient. Which is why construction crews are getting to work, breaking ground on this $40 million project that will redirect rainwater and snow melt from a west side neighborhood into two new detention basins. This is going to mitigate uh, flooding, you know, for 1,200 homes on the far west side. The basins will filter stormwater and discharge it directly into the Rouge River, providing significant relief to sewer systems. Now, it's a big project, so it will take some time. So this is expected to look like that in the next five years. Reporting in Detroit, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. All right, Kim, we're looking at the chances for a bit of rain this afternoon as we take a live look right now at downtown Mount Clemens. Well, let's get on over to meteorologist Brandon Roof for a look at what we can expect as Thursday continues as we're looking ahead to the weekend, too. Guys, we've had some showers push through the area. It's our second cold front of the day, but a lot of it really evaporating as it got closer here. As we widen the view, you can see there isn't much left here, but from the downriver communities into southern Ontario, a couple of showers also up near Wallace. These are heading off to the west, so <clears throat> really not a whole lot to look at here, but we'll show you as this line was approaching, there was a little more to it ahead of this cold front, and you can see as it approached Metro Detroit, it really just started to dry out, and that is that. Still could see a quick little shower or two with this cool front pushing through, but I think more and more in the way of sunshine and really nice. 79 degrees here, but you look back Ludington behind the cold front, 71 degrees. So temperatures will stabilize at some point this afternoon. In the meantime, we're in the upper 70s to low 80s, and perhaps you're heading to round one of the Rocket Mortgage Classic. We'll head into the low 80s and sort of hover there through the afternoon. Still a little windy, still a little muggy. We'll track a noticeable change coming your way coming up. Sandra? All right, Brandon, this afternoon we're getting a better look at the health of the economy and whether we may really be on the edge of a recession. The U.S. economy shrank for a second straight quarter. This comes on the heels of the Fed also announcing another aggressive interest rate hike to deal with inflation. Bree Jackson is on Capitol Hill with more on what this means for you. Today's gross domestic product report comes at a critical time. It's on the heels of the Federal Reserve raising interest rates for the fourth time this year. The gross domestic product fell 0.9% in the second quarter after decreasing 1.6% in the first quarter. Historically, back-to-back -back declines have signaled a recession, but the strong labor market we're seeing could prevent an official declaration. This is an economy that's weakening at a much faster rate than most people expected. That's the bottom line. Whether we're in a recession or not is not as interesting as the fact that we are weakening really fast. The GDP report follows the Fed's decision to hike interest rates again, an aggressive move aimed at taming rising prices. The labor market is extremely tight and inflation is much too high. 
Prices of goods and services have climbed at the highest rate in four decades, driven in part by Russia's war against Ukraine and the COVID-19 pandemic. The Fed has never had to face uh, this kind of inflation battle. The Fed chair says his goal is to bring inflation down from 9 to 2 percent without sparking a recession. We're not trying to have a recession and we don't think we have to. On Capitol Hill, there's hope a breakthrough deal with Senator Joe Manchin on a budget reconciliation bill will help reduce prices while also paying down the national debt. Well, I'm going to be glad to vote for something. Republicans argue Democrats' policies are part of the problem. All I've seen them do is reckless spending that increases taxes. So I can't imagine this is going to be any different. The administration points to bright spots in the economy, including declining gas prices, low unemployment, and higher wages. The Federal Reserve is likely not done with its rate hikes. Additional increases are expected later this year. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. President Biden is addressing the economy and the deal on that major legislation this afternoon. We're going to have an update for you coming up first at 4. New this afternoon, a deal is reached to merge two major airlines. That's right. JetBlue has now agreed to buy Spirit Airlines for nearly $4 billion. If approved by U.S. regulators, it would in fact create America's fifth largest airline. The announcement came one day after Spirit rejected a deal to merge with Frontier Airlines. The deal still needs approval from Spirit stockholders. The companies expect to close the deal sometime in 2024. Governor Whitmer in Sterling Heights this afternoon to get a look at the Innovate Mound Road project. Yeah, the project is underway and it's going to completely reconstruct nine miles of Mound Road right in between 696 and M59. A fourth lane will be added in each direction from 17 Mile Road to M59. Officials say this is one of several local projects supported by the budget that Governor Whitmer just signed into law. $32 million is going to the Innovate Mound project. The UAW increasing strike pay now for union members. Delegates at the Constitutional Convention voted to increase pay to $500 available on the first day of a strike. The International Executive Board already increased strike pay from $275 to $400 per week earlier in the year. It also eliminated a provision that a member may not receive UAW strike benefits if they're getting unemployment benefits. And now to a local 4 News update. We're getting a closer look at the capture of the men accused of stealing multiple Ford Raptor trucks from a lot in Dearborn. Now, we first told you about this situation last night at 11, and today state police released this chopper video. State police say that suspects in ski masks drove off with the cars right down the Southfield Freeway at Ford Road. Police were able to recover at least one truck and they took three people into custody and then three more stolen cars were found at a home in Detroit, including a Mustang GT 500 that was stolen out of the Flat Rock plant earlier this year. We're going to have much more on the investigation coming up tonight at five. The city of Detroit provides an update ahead of next week's primary election. Election officials expect a 12 to 17 percent turnout for next Tuesday's primary. About 40,000 absentee ballots are expected to be counted. City Clerk Janice Winfrey says security is also being increased during ballot counting at Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. So we feel pretty secure and we feel pretty safe. Um, we, we always engage all political parties to participate in the process because we believe that if you participate in the process, if you go through training, you have a better understanding of what goes on and you understand why certain things happen. We follow the law to the letter and everything we do is guided by Michigan election law. And you'll hear more about Detroit's election process coming up on later editions of Local 4 News. All right, so to come here at noon, a pretty terrifying experience for two Michigan corrections deputies. They start to experience symptoms of an overdose after being exposed to fentanyl. The video that shows them struggling to stay standing and what happened next. But first, the family of Novi's Paul Whalen reacts to the United States' offer of a prisoner swap to bring him home. That's coming up next.